You're watching F1 2022 Technical Analysis, brought to you by Aramco. Formula One has conquered porpoising. Or so you might think, given the big talking point of the first half of 2022 became less and less of a big deal as the season progressed. But the problems created by the biggest changes to F1 chassis regulations in World Championship history will never truly go away. All the evidence indicates the spectre of porpoising will haunt teams, ready to catch out those who are too aggressive or too easily seduced by appealing downforce figures with these ground effect machines. In fact, one of the key factors of F1 car design is going to be avoiding creating the conditions that lead to porpoising. In this video we're going to explain why that's the case, what impact the rule changes for 2023 will have and why it's taken so long for teams to understand and simulate a problem that first appeared in F1 more than four decades ago. Porpoising can never truly be vanquished because the laws of physics are immutable. The mechanism is well understood. The higher the speed of the car, the more downforce is created by the powerful underfloor Venturi tunnels. This pulls the car downwards, closer to the track surface, which in turn allows it to create more downforce. There comes a point when either because of proximity to the ground, possibly even with the floor hitting the track surface, or the speed of the airflow beneath the underfloor, that there is an aerodynamic stall. The car rises again, the floor starts to work as intended again, and downforce grows until you hit the stall point again. And so it repeats, creating the aerodynamic oscillation known as porpoising. The risks of this increase depending on how low you run the floor and also how aggressively you work the compression and expansion of the airflow under the floor. The underfloor comprises multiple interacting airflows and while working it hard can create eye-watering downforce figures, the more you push it, the more critical it can be. As Alpine Technical Director Matt Harmon explains, the sky-high downforce figures the floor can generate in optimum conditions are very enticing, but the important thing is not to do what Mercedes did in 2022 and lock yourself into too narrow a range of ride heights and mechanical characteristics. As Harmon puts it, it's all about creating an envelope to work in. That means that teams are always going to be battling to stay just inside the point where porpoising kicks in. As many teams have found as their cars have developed, it's easy to trigger porpoising with upgrades, so all the aero design work needs to be built around a philosophy that factors in this risk. Teams have understood plenty about porpoising over the course of the year, but all that means is that they know it's there, lying in wait to catch them out. The best teams will be able to be aggressive with how they run the car while avoiding getting themselves into trouble, just as Red Bull did with the dominant RB18 in 2022. The fact that GPS data suggested both Mercedes and Ferrari could, at times, generate higher downforce levels in fast corners than the Red Bull illustrates how important it is to get the compromise right. As part of Formula One's longer term attempt to make porpoising and bouncing less of a problem, the floor edges are being raised by 15 millimetres in 2023. This should reduce the risk of porpoising, but it isn't expected to eliminate it entirely. The idea is simple, raise the floor and the cars will no longer run so close to the ground and therefore will be less prone to porpoising. That will come at the cost of downforce, at least initially. According to the FIA's Head of Single-Seater Technical Matters, Nicholas Tombasis, the lap time loss will be in the region of half a second per lap. That figure, of course, is before re-optimisation of the cars and ongoing development, so it really won't take long for the teams to make up for that loss of performance. As Mercedes Head of Trackside Engineering Andrew Shovlin says, keeping the floor away from the track surface will ease the problem, both in terms of how low the car gets on the straights and in yaw in quicker corners but it won't eliminate it entirely. The 2023 changes build on the famous TD39 technical directive that introduced the AOM. This is the aerodynamic oscillation metric that monitors the vertical oscillations of the car. If the car bounces too savagely, then teams have to make setup changes to tackle it. While there are no high-profile cases of teams falling foul of this after the metric was introduced at the Belgian Grand Prix, the FIA has confirmed there were instances where teams were quietly told to take action after exceeding the permitted oscillation levels early in practice. But despite these twin measures, most teams expect porpoising still to be lurking in the background. Although, as Williams Head of Vehicle Performance Dave Robson has said, it won't be until the 2023 cars run in February that teams really know how close to the line they are. 
so while action has been taken, it would be naive to overlook the risk of porpoising happening again. Progress is a race that has no end. After every finish line, another challenge awaits. How can Aramco continue to push innovation in a sport at the forefront of technology? This is how. Discover how Aramco and the Aston Martin Formula One team aim to meet Formula One's sustainable fuel targets. Aramco, powered by how. When the porpoising problem became clear in February of this year, the obvious question was, why was everyone so surprised? After all, porpoising is a fact of life for ground effect cars, and was something teams battled during F1's last ground effect era from 1977 to 1982, prior to the introduction of the flat bottom regulations that outlawed such powerful flaws. The FIA's Nicholas Tombasis, one of the key architects of the regulations, admitted it caught everyone by surprise and drew what he called smug comments from those working on historic cars. McLaren technical director James Key also suggested that having more personnel old enough to have been around in F1 in the late 1970s and early 80s might have helped, and there's certainly an element of truth in that. After all, Adrian Newey played a key role in the success of the Red Bull, and that's the era when he first broke into F1, having written his degree thesis on ground effect. But there are other factors. Not only is this generation of cars pushing the boundaries of ground effect performance, but also it's at a time when wind tunnel and CFD time is strictly limited, even more so for F1's top teams. As Key explains, the scale and complexity of the simulations is unrealistic to have worked through in advance. As he puts it, it's impossible to model it within the aerodynamic restrictions because of loops and loops and loops of simulations within simulations to account for all the conditions that can contribute to porpoising. However, teams did get very good at anticipating the level of porpoising once they had accumulated data. For example, Mercedes predicted it would struggle in Abu Dhabi because of this. To add to the problem, this generation of cars are generally running very stiff. For some, this has exacerbated the problem. Indeed, Mercedes struggled with both porpoising and bouncing as separate troubles, but they were also interrelated. That means that the mechanical platform of the car plays an important role in controlling these effects. The Red Bull, particularly earlier in the season, appeared less stiff than the Ferrari and Mercedes cars, both of which were prone to porpoising. It also appeared the Red Bull was generating its downforce effectively at slightly higher ride heights, again ensuring it avoided falling into the porpoising trap. So even with the vast experience of 2022, there's always the risk that the problem might return with their 2023 cars. To prevent it, teams must avoid getting seduced by tempting high downforce numbers and ensure even within the challenges of simulation, that they don't stray into territory where the dreaded porpoising returns. Thanks for watching F1 2022 Technical Analysis, brought to you by Aramco.